Welcome to Global One Media Stocks to Watch. I'm Michael Swido. I'm speaking today with Alistair Waddell. He's the CEO of a Canadian company called Inflection Resources. They're drilling for gold and copper in Australia. Alistair is also the founding partner of an investment group that is one of Inflection Resources' primary backers. Alistair, welcome to Stocks to Watch. Thank you, Michael. Thanks for having me on. All right. So as we said, your company is Canadian. You're looking for gold and copper in eastern Australia, specifically in an area called the Macquarie Arc, and that's in New South Wales. Uh, I understand there's been a lot of exploration and mining projects there, but until relatively recently, there had not been a lot of new developments. So I'm curious, what attracted you to this location? Why do you believe there's more, more uh, gold and copper to tap there? Well, it was very much uh, opportunity driven. We were presented with a, an opportunity to explore the northern covered extension of this belt that hosts some of Australia's biggest uh, copper and, and copper gold mines. And uh, the, the big mine in the belt is uh, Cadia. This is actually Australia's largest gold mine and it's owned by uh, Newmont, uh, Newmont Mining. Mm. And there's a number of others, uh, including Evolution Mining's Cowell Deposit and North Park's Deposits. And uh, to cut a long story short, Michael, the uh, the southern part of this belt, essentially the southern 40% of this north-south trending belt is, is very well mineralized. But the northern 60% or so is covered with a blanket of younger uh, sedimentary rocks that are masking the prospective older underlying geology and the opportunity really was to explore this covered northern extension which was completely free of exploration licenses at the time this is back in 2018 and uh, we partnered up with a gentleman called uh, Dr Douglas Haynes who's been seriously successful at finding very big mines in Australia and elsewhere and he recognized the opportunity that the belt continues under this blanket of sediments and uh, to, to really lay it out there, we analyzed a, um, a regional magnetic survey that was flown by the government of New South Wales to encourage investment in mining exploration. And Douglas identified through looking at the magnetics, uh, essentially about 35 massive targets and can see, he considered analogous with these major mines located further to the south, which critically had not been drill tested before. So that was the exciting part for us. It was obviously at New South Wales and Australia being fabulous uh, mining friendly jurisdictions uh, and uh, an extension of a known very well mineralized belt that hasn't been explored uh, in recent years uh, that really remains untested. And, uh, you know, we're doing this two hours up a paved highway from uh, from Australia's biggest gold mine. So that was really the opportunity. It was a uh, jurisdiction, the scale of the price, and the fact that these targets had never been drill tested before. So that was the very exciting thing. And we didn't have to go off to some remote corner of the, the world to uh, to do this. This is um, about as mining friendly as it, as it gets. All right, fantastic. I mean, definitely sounds like some good reasons there. You have good neighbors, so to speak, uh, who have a lot of experience. Uh, I know investors love one word you use there, which is massive. Uh, the idea of having a massive deposit of anything, that sounds very encouraging. Uh, speaking of massive, uh, your company has licenses to explore over 7,000 square kilometers in the northern part of this territory. I mean, that is huge. Uh, but while your company is the largest owner of exploration licenses in the area, it is not working alone. You're partnering with a company out of Denver, Colorado called Anglo Gold Ashanti. It's listed in New York and has a host of projects across the globe. Uh, Alistair, I'd like you to tell us a bit more about this collaboration, if you would. Uh, why are you teaming up with Anglo Gold to explore the Macquarie Arc? Well, as you, as you started that, uh, we've got this huge land position that uh, extends over 7,000 square kilometers. So it's a massive piece of ground that requires a significant amount of time and capital to, to really explore properly. And uh, it was always our intention to partner uh, with a major mining company. And uh, it was Anglo Gold Ashanti that, uh, that we ended up uh, striking an agreement with. And, you know, Anglo Gold Ashanti is one of the world's biggest gold mining companies. And uh, we're thrilled to have them uh, with us as, as a real partner to, to explore our, our properties. And uh, the way it works, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we've identified all of these targets there over, over about 300 kilometers from north to south. And we've been systematically drill testing these targets through this blanket of sediments and drilling holes into the prospective uh, bedrock 
beneath that. And uh, what Anglo Gold has done, they came and partnered with us to help fund this sort of this phase one program, doing this sort of initial scout drilling, if you will, across the entire portfolio. And this is going to comprise uh, of about $10 million worth of, uh, of exploration drilling. These are Australian dollars. And uh, at the end of that phase one $10 million program, Anglo Gold then retains the right to earn up to a 65% interest in up to five individual projects by spending 27 million Australian dollars on each of those targets. If, if the targets progress that far, uh, they then retain the further right to earn up to a 75% interest in each of the targets uh, by completing what we call a pre-feasibility study. And this is a, a massive sort of economic a study that requires a lot of drilling. It takes into consideration engineering, environmental issues, water issues, permitting issues, et cetera, et cetera. It's a massive undertaking. So to earn a 75% interest in any of the targets, they've got to complete one of these pre-feasibility studies. And that also has to include a minimum of 2 million ounces of, of copper and gold in a what we call a measured and indicated category. So it's a, it's a fairly big... Uh, a uh, fairly high bar to, to, to get to, but um, obviously there's a, there's a long road ahead and uh, we're just thrilled to already have a partnership with one of the world's biggest uh, gold mining companies at such a, a, an early stage. So it's really, really de-risked uh, our exploration and it's really, uh, for, for, the, for our investors, it's really uh, stopped us having to go back to the capital markets to raise capital, to drill and test our thesis around these individual targets. So it's a wonderful thing. And then just finally, uh, as we, we operate uh, the, uh, the joint venture on behalf of Anglo Gold, we receive a 10% management fee for doing so. And that, uh, that equates this year to about a million dollars worth of, uh, of cash coming into our, our treasury. So our, our, uh, that covers all of our overheads and, and a few other things as well. So it's, uh, it's a wonderful partnership. It works very well for us and we believe it works very well for, for Anglo Gold. Uh, and the fact that they do not have to uh, operate and don't have to deal with the permitting and actually the drilling of the targets, et cetera, et cetera. But so it's a it's a wonderful agreement that works that works well for everybody. Now, sir, if we uh, take a closer look at exploration, I understand you've been using artificial intelligence and something called ambient noise tomography, and you're doing it in a novel way to map out the subsurface terrain. Can you tell us a bit more about that? So ambient noise tomography, or ANT, as it's referred to, is one of the most uh, cutting edge developments in the, the mineral exploration space. And uh, we've partnered up with a group called Fleet Space Technologies, which is really uh, Australia's uh, leading space group. They, they have their own satellites. And uh, what this, uh, this ANT does, um, it is essentially what we call a passive seismic survey. So they put these large, uh, sort of basketball size uh, devices in the ground on a grid like fashion. And what these devices measure in real time is essentially uh, movements in the earth. The earth is constantly flexing and moving. And there's a lot of uh, ambient noise as well, man made noise from things like traffic and, and whatnot as well. And this these can be measured. And what this ultimately does. Uh, it builds a three-dimensional picture of the subsurface. And uh, this is a fantastic layer of data, uh, which we then apply to our other data sets to generate uh, drill targets. And uh, we've now done uh, two of these surveys. They've done one over one very specific target that's returned very encouraging results. And then we've just recently completed a much more regional survey based on the success of the first covering most of our property portfolio, a much broader scale, but looking for very big, big structures that are important and the emplacement of these big uh, big copper gold deposits in, in the Macquarie Arc. So it's a, it's a wonderful thing. And uh, again, very happy to be partnered up with this group, uh, Fleet Space Technologies. And uh, I'd encourage everybody to, to have a look at, uh, at that company if you can. It's, uh, it's a really a, a fascinating new, new uh, technology that I think we're going to be talking a lot more about over the coming years. That's pretty cool. I, I like this idea that you're using space technology to look under the ground, under the earth, uh, and see what's there. Uh, I also understand that the results from uh, those initial surveys are out. Can you give us a quick overview? What have you found out? Well, we've been doing uh, a, a number of different things. So the results from our sort of uh, initial survey over our 
what we call our Duck Creek project. Uh, those results are out, and uh, we're actually drill testing a number of the uh, the targets that came out of that ANT survey right now. So we're going to be hearing more about that over the coming weeks and months. Um, but uh, the regional survey, yes, we've not yet uh, published those uh, those findings. We're currently analyzing and interpreting the results of that survey. But certainly, we're very encouraged with what we're seeing. And again, I think uh, it's part of a, a longer a longer project for the for the entire property portfolio. I think there's going to be a number of things that we're going to be following up there for uh, a long period of time to come as yet. All right. So speaking of following up, what's on your calendar for the rest of the year? So in terms of, uh, you know, for the rest of this year, it's really all about drilling. Uh, we've got a sort of a two phase uh, approach to, to, to drilling in New South Wales. We've got our phase one program, which is that scout drilling program, that $10 million program that's essentially doing first pass drilling into each of these uh, these targets. So we're, we're drilling typically two to three holes into each of these targets, looking for sort of key favorable attributes that we would associate with these big copper gold deposits. This could be favorable geochemistry or alteration that we see in the rocks or mineralization itself. So we're doing this sort of scout drilling across the portfolio. So that's, uh, there's going to be news coming out of that. And then the project I just mentioned, uh, Duck Creek uh, drilling, uh, on that one, this is sort of a phase two program where, where Anglo Gold is earning into up to a 65% interest. Uh, and we're doing sort of deeper drilling on that, really now vectoring in, uh, hopefully on, uh, on on the sweet spots in terms of copper and gold. So it's uh, sort of a two-pronged approach, more regional drilling and more focused drilling on our, on our Duck Creek project. So, but the news flow really is all about drilling at this point. And then we'll also announce the results of that regional ANT survey we just mentioned. All right, so a lot of drilling, and then again, using that space age technology to do that survey underground. Uh, before we wrap up, we have a lot of young investors who watch this series. And I have to say, it's been a pretty rough year for mining exploration stocks. So I wanna ask you, why do you think now is a good time for investors to take a fresh look at inflection resources? Why is it a stock to watch? Well, I mean, generally speaking, you, you have to be a contrarian in this business and, uh, you know, it's, you really need to be buying stocks when uh, when there are record lows. And I think just speaking generally about the industry, I think that right now, as you mentioned, uh, the junior sector is a little bit unloved, but the demand for copper and, and uh, a lot of uh, metals is, uh, is look, looks fantastic. And the long-term future looks amazing, but more specifically for inflection, you know, we're uh, obviously exploring for massive copper gold deposits in a fabulous uh, mining friendly jurisdiction, Australia. And uh, we are fully funded by, by Anglo Gold Ashanti. So we've already got that partnership. We're actively drilling. So there's going to be a lot of news flow uh, from, uh, from these various, uh, various targets and projects that we're doing. And uh, really, we do not have to uh, go back to the capital markets in any, any, any immediate uh, time in the future. So uh, we're in great shape. Uh, doing lots of drilling, and uh, every hole is testing some very big target that's uh, that's never been drill tested before. So you got a lot of fresh terrain to explore. You're in good financial shape, and you have strong partnerships. Uh, good combination. Alex, it's been a pleasure to meet you. Thank you so much for uh, walking us through uh, your work down there in New South Wales. Thank you very much. We've been speaking with Inflection Resources CEO Alistair Waddell, and you've been watching Global One Media Stocks to Watch. I'm Michael Swaddell.